All right, this is Crash Course, where I'll take a look at your videos. They look something like this. And hopefully use my coaching skills and my analytical skills to work out why you're falling off, uh, help you people that have sent your videos in, but also help everyone else, myself included, so that we can probably start falling off our bikes a little bit less. Right, we're starting with Jacob this week, who's riding his YT Capra in San Clemente, California. Now, this trail looks amazing. Look, I always love trails that go down gullies. It's kind of tight at the start though, but that looks like so much fun. Rails are last berm, and oh, no, it goes up on the top. Rails berm, and then comes to this bridge, super narrow bridge. And uh, Jacob says it's his first time he tries to ride it, and you see it goes wrong. Basically, falls a long way. He says that he actually um, smashed his face into that rock, but he was wearing his full face helmet, so he was all right. Uh, yeah, gnarly. I would think this is kind of because it looks like there's a step going up. So any little narrow things like this, I find actually be difficult as well, but you've got to try and get on it with a little bit of momentum. And obviously looking to the far end really helps. If you start looking down, it's much easier to lose your balance. You can practice this just riding anything narrow, like getting into the car park and riding along the white stripe. See if you can ride right along it by keeping your balance. But obviously if you steer off, the white line, you're going to fall off the bridge. So try and keep your bike central, move your weight around, but try and not steer too much and keep the bike on that line. But I think really what catches Jacob out here is that step on. So it's just going to kind of hook your back wheel up. Then that loss of momentum is going to make you wobble a bit if you're not perfectly straight. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite a gnarly crash. I would say I'd probably try and go a little bit quicker. And if anything, if you can hop onto it, it might sound a bit dodgy, but at least unweight a little bit onto it so it doesn't hook you up your back wheel, then hopefully you're gonna just speed along it and it'll be no problem. So practice on something a little bit less uh, dangerous, I would say. Right, on to Josh. This is in the UK, in the Swinley Forest. He says, note to self, don't go over branches at 45 degrees when wet. Yeah. I guess we all learn this one as well. Roots, anything when they're wet, that's absolutely lethal. And if you hit them at an angle without doing anything, you're just gonna slide off it. So this is where, I talk about this quite a lot in uh, yeah, roots, how to ride root to how to's, where actually you just gotta learn to unweight over them. So this is learning the bunny hop. So then you can only use it in like little stages. So you don't ha actually have to sort of hop over the thing. You could just unweight, your front wheel could just clip it, but there's no weight in it. It's probably not going to slip, or it's much less likely to slip. Same with the back wheel, unweighting up and over. So that is a really important skill for winter riding in the UK, definitely, because you're never going to be able to hit all routes straight on, or branches and logs if you go off the track. So a bunny hop probably would have saved you then if you if you're able to do it. Sometimes you're not because you might be sort of G and out, and then that's a problem. But definitely a case in point for learning how to bunny hop. On to Dylan, who's riding the Pines pump track. Don't know where that is, but someone will know. Uh, who's riding, check out the bike. It's an oversized BMX dirt jumper. It looks like a fun bike, actually, for hitting some jumps on. Uh, starting to get more and more confident. Thought I was doing well, clearing these little doubles, and then no one actually knows what happened. But for some reason, I lost my footing and had to bail out the side of the bigger, ta big, bigger tabletop. And I must say, the commando roll was divine. Divine. Yeah, something like that. Uh, right, let's take it back to the start, and I can think I can see why. So, if I actually look at this, you can see on that first jump, Dylan sort of really pulls, and I talk about this loads in uh, bunny hop how tos, where people want to pull the bike into the air. What you really need to do is sort of uh, help the jump do what it's already doing. So, push the bike through the jump, and it's going to pop you up. If you're trying to pull the bike into the air, there's a risk you start pulling your weight off the bike instead. And if you see that on the second jump as well, you can really see that the weight go up and then the bike come up afterwards. And that's why feet come off pedals. So actually on the, the jump uh, where he does crash, I can't really see it happen, but I've seen it in the two jumps before that. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking that's what happened here. Trying to pull the bike up in the air, feet come off the pedals, boom. So go back to basics, practice the bunny hop. And I do talk about people trying to use the bunny hop technique on a jump. It's, it's kind of not, you're not kind of bunny hop the bike into the air, but you're actually driving the bike in and then hopping, or at least using the same motion. And that, that way you should stay on the pedals in the bike and not come light off the pedals and then crash, hopefully. 
Right, this is in Rogate in the UK. This is Kitty hitting the main line. I've ridden this myself, it's a fun bit of track this. Hitting the main line for probably the hundredth time. This time didn't go to plan. The result of this video includes a stretch ride over the main line tables. Oh dear. Uh, check it out. I can see, I think, what goes wrong here. So there's that drop off. And if you look closely, if you pause it here, Look at this line in the middle. So there's a rut where the rain uh, washes the trail out. In the middle of the track, there is that sort of, you know, on the fall line, there's a rut. And I've done the very same thing, actually going back to this video I did with Rich, where I went off a drop off, landed on the side of a rut, and then game over. Your front wheel just slides into the bottom of the rut, and boom, over the bars you go. And I'm pretty sure that's what's happened here. Um, so how to avoid this? I guess just you know, if you're riding in conditions or on trails that you know have been washed out and they've got rain ruts, try not to stay in the bottom where you know the, the water's gonna make a bit of a rut. That's where the stream's gonna roll down the, the middle of the trail. So if anything, try and come off that drop off and lie, uh, land on the side of the track if you can. Or, you know, if you're gonna land in the middle, land right in the middle, but it's still a bit dangerous. If you're slightly off, your front wheel's gonna hit the edge and game over, so. You know, like I said, I've done it myself, but if it's a bit of trail that you've ridden often or you can see that it's really rutted out, then try and stick to the side of the trail. Now, we all know jumping's dangerous. Here's another example of Carl having quite a big crash, actually. This is in Davio del Norte in the Philippines. Uh, Carl's riding his Dartmoor Hornet. Uh, we're beginners in mountain biking. We uh, go and ride our local trails with some of the small jumps. My friends want to try it out and I ended up crashing. What went wrong? Um, thank you and more power. Thank you, Carl. Uh, yeah, I, I guess this looks like two things it probably would have caused this. Either trying to turn too close to a jump, because you can see how the bike just gets away from Carl. It goes one way, Carl goes the other. And by the time he lands, it's just too far gone. So he just slams off the side of the bike. So either just being not above the bike, so turning too close to the edge, or the other more common reason probably is a pull on the bars. It kind of looks like that to me if you go back, if you're doing it slow mo, there's a you know you can see as soon as he takes off, the arm turns like this, and the foot comes off the pedal, and that's Carl trying to sort of throw his weight to counterbalance that. So I think uh, going back to nice manuals where you're staying above the bike, if you're practicing your manuals and you're always falling off the side, either because you're pulling and your arms are pulling one more than the other, or you're just not staying central when you're moving the bike, that can cause you to go one way or the other. So a bit of practice, and that that sounds crazy practicing manuals, but it will help you out. By the time you're getting into the air, if you're used to being sort of central above the bike, then you're gonna stay much, much straighter in the air. And also practicing on tabletops. This is a gap jump as well. So there's just more things that can go wrong. So try and find some smaller jumps, tabletops, and just go slowly. So you can jump onto the top, making sure you're staying central and then get bigger and bigger. And you'll get it soon enough. Uh, so small steps rather than big leaps and big crashes. But nice one, Carl. Thanks for sending in your video. Hopefully I've helped you out. So link down below the video for you to get involved. Send your videos. Uh, they might be in fails and bails on our Instagram. They might make it in the dirt shed or they might make it here onto Crash Course and I'll try and help you out. Hopefully stop me from crashing so much.